to taking full control of Al Khalidiyah neighborhood, our armed forces restore security and stability to the mills area between homes, ancient garage, and Arai Canal. Russia calls for lifting the sanctions on Syria and affirms readiness to continue dealing with the UN Human Rights Committee. Iraq faces a war waged by sectarian terrorist forces with a view of igniting a civil war among the Iraqi people's components. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. Our armed forces have restored security and stability to the mills area that extends between Homs Ancient Garage and Arai Canal in the city, killing and wounding several terrorists in some neighborhoods in Homs. The military source which reported this added that the army also destroyed terrorist hideouts and gatherings in Babhud and Al Qarabis as well as near the National Hospital in Jurat al Shayyah and Al Abraj area in addition to the 8th of March swimming pool and Dik al Jinn in Al War, Khadija Al Kubra School, Al Masabir, Wadi Sayh and Al Hamidiyya in the city of Homs killing terrorists and confiscating weapons and ammunition. The source added that an army unit intercepted armed terrorist groups who tried to infiltrate into Adar al-Kabira and al ghsaybiya in the direction of Al-Dwer north of Homs, killing and wounding several terrorists. On the other hand, the army destroyed a number of terrorist gatherings in At-Talbisa, Ar-Rastan, al ghanto and Adar al-Kabira. Among the killed terrorists in Talbisa, Adnan Shahoud, nicknamed Al-Badawi, a leader of a terrorist group, Mohammed Al Mahmoud and Mahmoud Al Daikh were identified. Syrian citizens and their valiant armed forces are determined to continue their course in ridding Syria of the terrorists, offering their souls for this sublime objective so that Syria would remain strong with its citizens and soldiers who have foiled all the schemes that aim at weakening and portioning the country. Our armed forces continue to perform their national task in clearing homes of terrorists and have pursued their operations in the neighborhoods adjacent to Al Khalidiya after declaring its full control on the latter. In a new strategic victory over terrorism, the Syrian Arab army has declared full control over Al Khalidiya neighborhood in ancient Homs after completing its task there in eliminating the criminal gangs who wreaked havoc in the area. The army destroyed a number of tunnels which the terrorists used in executing their crimes. It also diffused dozens of explosive devices that the terrorists planted in roads and buildings to prevent the advance of the Syrian Arab army into the neighborhood. This step will have a big impact on the process of eliminating the remaining terrorist gangs in other areas in ancient Homs. The army also continues its task in eliminating Takfiri gangs in Babhud, Al Qarabis and Jurt al Shayyah. Syrian citizens and their valiant armed forces are determined to continue their course in ridding Syria of the terrorists, offering their souls for this sublime objective so that Syria would remain strong with its citizens and soldiers who have foiled all the schemes that aim at weakening and partitioning the country. The valiant Syrian army soldiers have liberated Khalid ibn al-Walid Mosque in Homs, which the terrorists had used as an operation room for their crimes. In this mosque lies the noble Sahabi Khalid ibn al-Walid, the great Muslim leader, who was buried here, the last area in which he fought the Romans in Homs during al Khulafa al-Rashidin rule. Another brave leader, Al-Zahir Bibers, later built a mosque on the tomb of the late Muslim leader Khalid ibn al-Walid, nicknamed Saifullah al-Maslul, who was buried in Homs in this neighborhood called al Khalidiya after him. The monument remained safe until the Takfiris came with their fatwa that the tombs of the Sahaba are but a pagan heritage that should be destroyed, turning the mosque into the relics we are seeing now. 
They had also ruined the tombs of Prophet Muhammad's Sahabas, Ammar ibn Yasir and Hajar ibn Adi al-Kindi. The state has given its directives to reconstruct the mosque after liberating it. In Homs, a number of citizens were killed and others wounded when a missile shell launched by terrorists fell near Al Husami Mosque in Ad Dablan neighborhood, targeting worshippers as they came out of Al Taraweeh prayers, causing huge material damage to neighboring houses. In Homs countryside, the Syrian army has foiled an infiltration attempt by an armed terrorist group from the Lebanese Arsal area through Khirbet al-Hamam in the southern countryside of Al-Qusayr, killing many terrorists, injuring others, and arresting the two terrorists, Barqawi and Jilam. In Idlib, the Syrian Arab army destroyed the hideouts of the terrorist group of Jabhat al-Nusra, as well as a facility to make missiles in Ma'arret al-Nu'man, killing many terrorists. Mara'yan, Kafir Shahlaya, Blashton, and Al Magara. In Aleppo, Syrian Arab army destroyed terrorists' weapons and ammunition loaded in vehicles at the crossroad of Atarib Daret Azza Urum al Sughra, southwest of the governorate's countryside. The weapons were meant to reach Khan al Asal to support the armed terrorist groups there. The Syrian Arab army also eliminated terrorist gatherings in the two areas of Al Atarib and the residential complex of journalists. Many terrorists were also killed while they were blocking the roads and committing acts of looting and kidnapping on the road of Al Raqqa, Al Bab, Al Leppo, and in the areas of Ain Dukne, Tal Rufat, Dar Hafer, and in Al Mansura village. Army units also fought terrorists that have been trying to sneak into Dharet Abd Rabbo in Al Layramun, killing many of them. The Syrian Arab army also repelled attempts by terrorists to attack the central prison of Aleppo, eliminating their gatherings at the glass factory, Hlanin, and the nearby area, destroying the terrorist hideouts in the villages of al Alqamiya and Minnek. The Syrian Arab army also foiled a terrorist attempt to infiltrate in the secure areas in the neighborhoods of al rashidin Salahuddin, killing many terrorists and injuring others. In Aleppo suburbs, our armed forces continued to pursue terrorists in the villages surrounding Talat Khanasar, restoring security and stability to them after eliminating the armed men there. The villages included Abdo Musa, Hijara Kabira, Jibawat, Al Qurbatiya, and Al Rashadiya. Several terrorists were killed. Their equipment was destroyed and their weapons confiscated. Other terrorists who took refuge in Ajjan Al Hadid farm and Aleppo Idlib Road were also killed. Russia's permanent representative to the United Nations, Vitaly Chorkin, expressed his hope that the UN report on human rights in Syria would include a call for lifting the sanctions imposed on the country. During a session of the UN General Assembly, Chorkin said that Russia is not convinced of not including a wording of this kind in the UN draft resolution as the sanction issue is related to the policy of the UN member states. Russian UN representative expressed hope that the UN Commission would listen to the information provided by the victims of the crimes perpetrated by armed groups in Syria, referring to Russia's willingness to continue to deal with the inquiry and to provide information as a result of its contact with the victims of armed groups in Syria. Welcome back. Iraqi Minister of Interior said that Iraq is facing a war waged by sectarian terrorist parties with the aim of reproducing a civil war between the components of the Iraqi people. In a statement, the ministry said that Al-Qaeda groups carried out a wave of terrorist attacks by car bombs and explosive devices yesterday that targeted civilian gatherings in a number of districts in Baghdad and the other governorates that resulted in the killing and injury of dozens of people. Finally, in Libya, two people were killed and four others were injured following clashes that erupted in the city of Sirte between a Libyan army battalion and an armed group. 
Meanwhile, a Libyan army officer, Ahmed al-Siddiq al-Zawi, was killed in Benghazi in a blast caused by an explosive device planted in his car, while an army colonel survived an assassination attempt through a similar explosion. A Libyan security official was also targeted in a blast with an explosive device planted in his car, causing him serious injuries. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.